Hello YouTube and welcome to another edition of Catholic Apologist from Dean Britton and today's video is on Sola Fide. It seems appropriate to make a video on this. My last video was on uh, Sola Scriptura so that being said I thought we would do uh, Sola Fide which is kind of the uh, shall we say the cousin or little brother if you will of, of uh, Sola Scriptura. So Sola Fide essentially means Latin for faith alone which uh, started this doctrine started off in the 16th century, but the same time and the same person as Sola Scriptura. And uh, essentially it has come to mean today that we are saved. We get salvation through faith alone. And uh, this is something that was never taught by the early church. It was never taught by any of the apostles or church fathers. Like I said, it was put forward in the uh, 16th century by the same fellow who put forth the doctrine of Sola Scriptura. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read some of the passages who uh, the people use who believe this doctrine. I'm going to read, uh, also quote some other uh, scriptures. We're going to kind of explain what was happening, um, you know, in the Holy Land at the time uh, these various pages were written. And then I'm going to end with the Catholic position on how we are saved. Okay, so sola fides, faith alone. Now, when I'm talking, debating with uh, fundamentalists or Protestants, the, uh, the most common verse that comes up is Ephesians 2, 8, which I'll read right now. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So this verse is kind of the, the flagship sort of verse, so to speak, of uh, Sola Fide. And uh, there's another verse too, which I'm going to read, and this is from Galatians 3. And uh, then I'm going to explain uh, why these passages do not support Sola Fide. This is from uh, Galatians 3.21. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Well, that's strong language from St. Paul. Uh, before your eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? So here we have some insight into what uh, Paul is referring to when he's talking about uh, works. Okay, As I said before, um, as I've said many times, the Bible contains some homonyms. Okay. There are several words in the Bible, New Testament, that have more than one meaning, more than one application. And unfortunately, our fundamentalist brethren, they tend to uh, not understand that. They just tend to take a certain word and, and throw out a passage there, you know, completely out of context and not understanding that these homonyms exist. For example, in the Sola Scriptura video, I talked about uh, tradition and how uh, tradition is used in different ways, different meanings in the New Testament because there's two different kinds of tradition. Likewise, in the New Testament, there are two different kinds of works, okay? And I already kind of gave you a hint, and I read from Galatians. In the Galatians verse, you know, Paul specifically says works of the law. So what was the law that Paul was referring to? And it is so simple, the only religious law that existed at the time, and that, of course, was the Mosaic law, okay? The law that is still contained in the Old Testament, although it's, of course, been fulfilled in what Jesus did. Okay, so that being said... Uh, with those two verses, before I move on to, to the really good verse about that really explains uh, how we are saved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, really kind of go back in time here. I'm going to tell you about something that was uh, happened in the Holy Land where Paul was preaching. And even uh, a lot of people don't understand this. Okay? This is going to benefit both Catholics and fundamentalists. So uh, the first converts to Christianity were Jewish. Okay? And... Uh, but very shortly afterwards, then Gentiles started coming in too. Now these are, uh, before they were united under Christianity, these were two very different peoples. You know, they did not get along. They, uh, they uh, avoided each other. In some cases, even abhorred each other. And now they're together under the same roof. Wow. Like it was wonderful. You know, we're just all one family now. But at the same time, there were some growing pains, which I'm going to explain, okay? So... What happened was some areas, you know, were mostly Jewish, wasn't too bad. Some areas were mostly uh, Gentile, again, wasn't too bad. But some places, like Galatia, for example, there was a relatively equal amount of uh, Jews and Gentile converts. So when they came together under the same roof, there were, there were some problems. The Jewish converts, because they already possessed quite a lot of knowledge of the God of Abraham, they kind of thought saw themselves as sort of spiritually, theologically superior to the Gentiles, and they kind of condescended on them. And what they were basically were doing was they were kind of convincing, trying to convince the Gentile converts that they should do as they were doing, which was, of course, obser observing certain elements, certain parts of the Mosaic law, you know, like circumcision being a good example. This naturally confused the Gentile converts, 
And this obviously made St. Paul quite upset. And that's when he wrote, yo, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? But here Paul specifically says, you know, works of the law, referring to the Mosaic law. And in the book of Ephesians, it's the same thing. It's referring, when he says not of works, he's referring to works of the Mosaic law, because he's trying to emphasize the importance of faith. He never says faith alone, just saying that faith is important. And of course, the funny thing about sola fide, and the, the ironic thing that fundamentalists use Ephesians 2, 8, is that in the very first words, the very um, first five words of verse 8, it makes it very clear that it says that, for it is by grace. <laughs> okay, so the first thing of salvation, salvation is essentially, we are essentially saved by grace, and a little more of that later. So uh, faith is very important, but it's not the it is not the be all end all, and nowhere does it say faith alone. Now that sets me up for my next point. I already mentioned Martin Luther, who put who created the doctrine of uh, sola scriptura, and of course I say invented because sola scriptura, sola fide, were unheard of prior to the 16th century. They were not taught by any apostle, church father, or saint. Okay, so now that being said. I'm going to go on to, uh, now I, of course I mentioned homonyms, so now I'm going to explain the other meaning of the word, the other application of the word works. I'm going to go to one of my favorite books, James. Go to James chapter 2, verse, I'll start with the 23, go to 25. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That's pretty much what justification is. And he was called a friend of God. As you can see, a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute justified by her works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them off on another route. Wow, it's amazing. Now, needless to say, Martin Luther did not like that verse one bit because it completely slam-dunked his invention of sola fide. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, and it really grieves my heart when I hear Protestants hailing Martin Luther as a hero of the Bible. He was anything but a hero of the Bible. For one thing, he added the word alone right after faith in the book of Romans, thus becoming the first person to knowingly corrupt the Bible. Okay? He also, and people don't know this, but this is true, he re publicly referred to the book of James as, quote, the epistle of straw. Okay? He hated the book of James. He know, knew that it disproved his own doctrine, and so he hated it, and he even tried to drop the book of James and several other New Testament books from the canon. Fortunately, the Spirit of God, acting through his peers, stopped him. They said, no, you can't do that. You can't drop entire books from the Bible just because they prove your personal interpretation, your personal beliefs wrong. Okay, And they were absolutely right. And I just cannot believe that anybody could call Martin Luther a hero of the Bible when he added the word alone after faith, and when he tried to drop several New Testament books. He was anything but a hero of the Bible. Okay, so that being said, now again, I talked about works. Okay, when Paul was talking about works in Ephesians and Galatia, he was specifically referring to works of the Mosaic Law. James is talking about general good deeds, general acts and works of charity. Okay, so there's a, these are two different types of works. And the works that James is referring to are absolutely necessary for salvation, okay? So that being said, here's the Catholic position. First of all, the Catholic Church has never, ever taught a works salvation. We've never taught that you earn or work your way to heaven. That is absurd, okay? We simply say that we are not saved by faith alone. Because as I just proved, the Bible does not teach that, okay? The Catholic position is this, that we are saved essentially by grace, Okay, which comes to us through faith, but with works. Okay, and I've heard fundamentalists try to twist the meanings of James so many different ways, and it doesn't work. Okay, you can't say that they say that oh, that's referring to being justified before men, or yada yada, or uh, if you have if you have faith, it'll manifest itself in works. Okay, well, first of all, James does not care about being justified by men. He's talking about being justified by God. And second of all, it says very clearly, he says the word if. If faith, if it's unaccompanied by works, in other words, he's saying that it's possible to have faith alone. And he says, if you only have faith alone without works, that faith is useless and dead and cannot save. That is the word of God. We are, we are not saved by faith alone. So anyway, I hope that clears it up. Um, all I can say is, uh, yeah, just uh, please read the Bible in context. Understand what was going on at the time. 
You can, you can also read the writings of the uh, apostles and church fathers and like the Didache and other writings outside the Bible where they make it very clear that uh, how we are saved. We are saved by grace, which comes through faith with works. Thank you very much for watching. And God bless you.